Howdy, I'm Robert Carter from the Museum of York County, where I'm an educator and interpreter, and it is time for another wild wonder. And this month's wild wonder is the Eastern Black Swallowtail. All right, so here we have the larvae, you would often call it the caterpillar, the Eastern Black Swallowtail. The Eastern Black Swallowtail, of course, is dark. It's almost black in color. It has some, uh, some yellow spots, and the female is slightly larger than the male, but it's a... Uh, it can be hard to tell the, the sexes apart unless you're really well trained. And you find this from Canada all the way down into South America. And it likes, likes open habitats, a lot of um, meadows, fields, kind of wetland areas. You can find it in some gardens. They really prefer to feed on any species that is in the Apaceae family. Okay, and that's the carrot family. Now, in this video, it, it appears that he's feeding on Golden Alexander, which is a native species to, to South Carolina. The, uh, the genus is Zizia. But you can also find it feeding on uh, parsley and species such as that, parsnip, uh, fennel. Um, so another name for it is sometimes the uh, parsnip swallowtail or the parsley swallowtail, because they will, will feed on those. And what you see with the uh, the really bright colored where it's got the the yellow and the kind of the black and the and the white stripes there that is the uh, the third and fourth instar because the uh, the caterpillar the larvae go through stages and this particular species has usually has four instars and this is the third and the fourth instars these are the the larger ones these are the more mature ones and that color it's called crypsis, which is just a fancy word for camouflage. Okay, because it has so many different colors and it that has the different patterns, it kind of breaks up the outline of of the uh, the caterpillar. And also, if it's a sunny day and you got the sunlight dappled on the uh, the plant, they can kind of blend in. Now, when you see the first two in stars, they're, they're darker colored, and they almost can look like bird feces. So that is their way of protection. When they're adults, they have one form of uh, protection, and that is the, the yellow and the black and the white, which also kind of looks like a monarch butterfly larvae. Monarch butterfly larvae taste bad, and they're poisonous. So that's another means of protection. Anytime a species that is non-toxic looks like another species that is toxic, that is called a Batesian mimicry. <laughs> so the larvae, which is looks similar to the monarch butterfly larvae, that is called Batesian mimicry. And another really cool thing they do to uh, protect themselves is that whenever they feel threatened, the larger caterpillar can pop out the structure called a osmeteria and it is kind of a forked and it's orange and it's going to produce a chemical odor which keeps ants away so that's another way of protecting themselves so overall a really really cool species here first two end stars which are darker now they do look like like a uh, bird feces but they also have this little white structure on the back. You can see it there. And that has uric acid. And that uric acid helps to protect them from some of the toxins and the plants they feed upon. And right here, you see a larger caterpillar. It is trying to push this smaller caterpillar, which is in the first, uh, probably the second end star there. You can see the white spot on the back. Well, they're having a tussle here over this spot to feed. This must be a really great place to, to find food because the, the older larvae wants it. But as you're gonna see, the small larvae, the first and second in stars, does not give up and it holds its, holds its feed in sight and the older one just has to move on. So until next month's Wild Wonder, get out there and explore your Carolina world.